My name is Debbie Alwyn Gator Stitcher. Welcome to Floss Tube number eight. Today is Thursday, April 29th, 2021. Welcome back to all my returning viewers and subscribers. And if you are new here, welcome. This is a video primarily about cross stitch, but a little bit about what I'm reading and watching and life thrown in. My exciting life news is I got my second COVID shot about two and a half weeks ago. And to celebrate the two week mark, I went and got my first uh, professional mani pedi in over a year. So I decided I needed to treat myself a little bit and just start getting back to some of the little things that we used to do um, before we all had to um, go into lockdown. I also spent a lot of the last three weeks since my previous video doing a lot of reorganization of my cross, cross stitch supplies. I um, have 40 plus ongoing projects right now and I had kitted up each project separately and it was just starting to take up a lot of space and made me think about you know how many different skeins of a certain number do I own but I don't really need that many skeins to complete all the projects that I had. Um, and so I made a determination that I needed to think about um, collapsing all my supplies into one big master set and just working from that. Um, and I'd been thinking about this for a couple of months, but I hadn't pulled it because once you combine everything, it's very hard if it doesn't work to go back to the way you had done it before. Um, I, right now, I'm not traveling much, and I really only have two stitchy spots in my house, and we, are, we have a one-level house, so it's not like if I've left something I needed in the other room, it's a pain to, to run and find it. Um, so I had been mulling this over for a while and then two floss tubers sort of either had done it or have been talking about it. The first one is Stitchman Darcy and the second one was Denise from Black Ribbon Stitch Studio. They are, uh, videos are a lot of fun to watch, um, but they ha are very different styles of stitchers and probably, uh, you know, in different places in their life right now. And so I thought, well, if two different people are either doing this or considering doing it, maybe it's not such a novel idea and maybe I should do it as well. So I just ripped off the band-aid and took all of my DMC and put it into one large master set. Um, and so I keep hoping that I won't have to go buy any more DMC for a really long time. Um, even if I start new projects um, at the end of this year, that I will have all the colors I need. Of course, I was working on a project about three days after I had done that and one of the colors I needed I didn't have. I in the 90s I think bought a huge master set of DMC and then as I finished one off I would always replace it and so as a result of that I have all the DMC colors but in the 90s I don't think the 3800s and a few others had existed and of course this was a, a, a floss that I needed that was in the 3800s. Um, so I did go to Michael's yesterday and buy that but hopefully I won't have to go buy any more floss for a really long time. Um, I do, I am keeping my fancy flosses um, with the individual projects because of the dye lots can vary so much on the color. And so therefore I didn't, um, I didn't want to separate that out. Hold on a second. My apologies for that pause. I had a little distraction. Um, the other part of the reorganization that I did was I saw a tutorial from Erin at the Steel City Stitchers and she was talking about how she uh, has starting to store her fabric and it is fabulous. It's one way so simple and yet it, it, it really does make a difference. So I had sort of, you know, I had a, a, a drawer that I put everything in um, but it wasn't really organized and basically you just take a, what she called comic book boards, uh, wrap them, wrap the fabric on there, mark on the comic book board what it is and then you have it. So here is, I'm not sure I can get it all, I'm making a total mess, but here's the fabrics that I have right now that I'm not uh, using. So and, I'm, so, and I'm organizing them I've, uh, by color, excuse me, by color and not by uh, producer because when I am, whenever I want to kit up a project, I like to look down and see what colors I have that might work for it. Um, it less important for me that it has to be a Fortnite fabric or be Stitch Me fabric or um, Picture This Plus. Um, they're all great fabrics, I'm so, but it's really the color that draws me in and maybe the count if that's important as well. Um, and all of that is marked on there, including who does it, but I've done it by color. Um, so you can see I have a lot of grays because I'm doing the gray fabric of the month from Fortnite fabric, um, but I also really love blues and other colors as well. Um, so I have a, 
a good stash and building it up. And when I am able to start new projects at the end of this year, when no new start 2021 is over, I will uh, be, it will be much easier for me to look and figure out what, what fabric I can use with my project. But anyhow, I'm going to move on to my stitching because I have a lot to show you. Um, as you know, I'm really into a lot of the challenge groups and in April, there were two um, sort of main challenges that drove my stitching um, and to the extent that I could fit other projects in with that, I, I did that. Um, so the two that drove me were Go Stitch and Semi Sane Stitchers, which is basically every day there is a letter and you have to put 200 stitches in the project that begins with that letter or if you don't have that project, you put in 400 on a project of your choice, you say Go Stitch. Um, and the second one was the riff off from No New Start. I had basically finished um, the riff off um, before my previous uh, um, video. I have a, a few more projects that I fit in, but honestly, that was so long ago, I don't remember the, the connections. So I'm really going to focus, I'm going to show the whips in the order that I did them for the semi sane stitchers and if it ties into other things as well, um, other, other prompts, I will show you how I did that. So on, and I'm, I'm looking down at my notes that I have because there's no way I could remember everything that I did. Um, so on um, April 8th, I believe that the uh, letter that was drawn was H. And so I chose to do uh, His Eyes on the Sparrow by Heartstring Samplery. I think many of you are familiar with this project. Um, and uh, I don't think this pic particular picture does it justice at all. I've seen so many people who have completed this and it looks absolutely amazing. So this was a, uh, and this was also for letters of the month. Um, this was, um, I was on H and so this was one of the projects I did. Whoops, and that is sideways. So um, basically what I did was I was, uh, I had started the peacock and I was determined to finish that peacock. Um, and of course I then determined that even though I had, this is all using fancy flosses and I had kitted up the whole project, there was one color I didn't have, and of course it was in the peacock. So he still needs a little bit to go. You can, um, something down here in his wing, um, old hickory, I'm assuming I can find it someplace. Um, because when I was kidding this up last year during the pandemic, it was impossible to find anything, but I'm hoping um, stores are able to uh, start stocking up better now. Um, and then I just, so you can see here, I, and then just to get, finish off my 200 stitches after I finished up the peacock, I just started pulling uh, the border over a little bit more. Um, so, and I was able to meet my goal of 500 stitches for letter of the month on this. Um, so this is a, a lovely pattern. I think it's one that will take me a, a long time to work on simply because, um, uh, because, uh, it is so large. Um, and I am doing this on a 32 count. Uh, this is a, uh, 32 count or is it 30? No, sorry. It's 36 count. Um, picture this plus doubloon and I am doing uh, one over two. Okay. Um, and then I don't remember what the letter was for the next day, but I did not have that letter. Um, and so uh, I had to do 400 stitches. And I know that this tied in with something with the, um, with the riff off. So I worked on Mirabilia Portrait of Veronica. And I've talked about this a lot. I am doing the skin one over one, and that's where I'm stuck right now. So uh, this is this is starting to come out sort of in her uh, sort of chest area and a little bit of her uh, where her fingers are because she's like this with her hand. Um, so that's what I, I did a little bit uh, working on this. I then, um, I believe the next letter that we had was L. And so I uh, picked out from Leela Studio, uh, Freedom Ring. Uh, this is this is something I saw that uh, Lauren Carla from Cobweb Corner held this uh, pattern up on her floss tube a while ago. It was one of those things that just sort of took my breath away. I thought it was so amazing. So um, I put a couple hundred more stitches into this for L for Let Freedom Ring. And so this is where. Um, I am now. So I'm obviously still uh, towards the beginning, um, but getting uh, this flower, I was able to fill in the petals and, and build the stems up a little bit more. So. And then I moved on um, 
I honestly uh, don't remember what the next letter was, um, but I decided to do uh, a go, uh, go stitch on this one um, because it was also, it, it tied in to um, No New Starts. So this is Evening Romance by Artisy, and then this got pulled out several times more as well um, because E has been called as well as there was a vowel one and um, uh, that got called. So. This is where I am on Evening Romance. This is um, the third page. Somewhere, I don't know, somewhere in here is the halfway mark of the going across the top. I do not have this pattern in Pattern Keeper. I only have a paper copy. I bought it quite a few years ago. Um, so it is slow going, and as you can see, it is all confetti. Um, but this one, it got called for, um, uh, for when, when I decided to do it, I think I was trying to, to link a horse or a carriage um, to let freedom ring, um, which as you can see, there is a horse-drawn carriage in this. Um, when I decided um, to pull this uh, to pull this out, um, I, I really would like to get this page finished. I keep thinking, it's got to be less confetti on the next page, and there never is. Um, but I was able to put in 200 stitches yesterday as well, because E was called. It's been called again for today. We had the same letter two, two, week, two days in a row. Um, so I'll put in a few, couple hundred more stitches on this. They also had um, a vowel, which you tried to get a hundred stitches into as many whips as possible um, that began with vowels. And so uh, we see evening romance for the E, that was one of the vowels. So the next one that I pulled out, um, so I, I believe uh, the letter M was called. So I pulled out my Mandala Giraffe from Awesome Pattern, awesome pattern Studio. Um, this was also one that I had for uh, the group letter of the month. So um, in addition to H, I'm also doing G, so Mandala Giraffe, the G. Um, and I was able to get in quite a few stitches on this. Um, so I know that I, I finished off his ear, got a lot done of this horn and just, you know, started filling in. I think the way my cue snap was on this, I couldn't, it was probably cutting here, maybe a little bit over. So I wasn't able to do the, all of the, the balancing across, but I was able to the extent possible, start filling in. Um, this was the, the piece on which I realized I was missing one of the, uh, flosses, one of the 3,800 flosses. So you can see here, there's a little gap in his ear that I was not able to fill that in. But I now have that. So next time I pull this out, I'll be able to make a lot of really good progress. Um, and I feel like I'm over halfway done with this because I've done so much of the width and obviously haven't done much in the bottom. It comes down to about here, but obviously it gets narrower. So it's much easier um, to do it there. The next project that I worked on was um, I guess a G got called. And so I pulled out Green Dancer from Artisy. So uh, this is uh, based on the artwork from Edward Degas. Um, I think many of you are familiar with it. And so here's where I am now. So uh, there's a little bit that's still under the Q snap, but this is basically um, the top row is completed. For some reason, I had thought there was only nine pages to this pattern. So I was like, I'm gonna be a third done when I get uh, get to the, you know, finish this page. And then I had a realization that there's actually 12 pages to the pattern. And so I'll only be 25% done uh, when I get to the end of this page. Um, but nonetheless, I really um, enjoy working on this. It's a beautiful picture. Again, I only have this as a paper pattern, so it takes a little bit more time than some of my other ones, but it is really beautiful to do. Um, so um, I have also for May, when I get to plans, I'll talk about this a little bit more, but I, I have this in my plans for May so that I can get enough stitches to, to finish off this page and start uh, working down a little bit um, just to make some good progress on this one. Um, after that, um, I, I believe that the, uh, well, I don't know. It, what, from what I have here, I have uh, the next one I have here, so I will go ahead and show this now. It might be a little bit out of order now. Um, it's my old world map. This is my oldest project. Started it in December 2019. And so I try and do a little bit on this every day. Um, this uh, was also my whip go, one of my whip goes for um, 
one of my whip goes for April. Um, but I, because I work on this every day, I greatly exceeded what I need to. So basically here, here is just so, I mean, I'm kind of doing a combination of working my way across and also starting to fill in uh, down. So there's a lot of sort of sky stuff up here. And what I'm very excited about is some of these sort of stitches, the confetti stitches that are going on here are now starting to get into the actual map. Um, I'm still a long way off from being, getting anything that looks like a map, but I was very excited that I'm starting to get a little bit of that in there. Um, so, um, and this one also, I know I used it for um, the vowels, old world map, and um, and I, and probably for I can't remember it for magical stitches. We had to stitch on something like with an angel, and obviously uh, there are some angels in this pattern. So that was another another one of my whips. Um, for the vowel one, I also used Oak Drive. Um, let me pull out the picture for you. This is from Mystic Stitch. This is what it will look like. This is quite a large, um, quite a large pattern. And I had made the decision, um, excuse me, my, my needle fell. I just want to make sure I have my hand. There we go. Um, that I had been doing this with parking um, because I thought it was just, it would be like this, this, this is so confetti heavy stitching when you get to this, these green parts here. And I was really concerned about knowing where I was at all times. But I, for me, I've just come to a conclusion parking is not for me. It makes me not want to pull a piece out. And if that's what's going to happen, then why am I stitching it? I should be enjoying my stitching while I'm doing it. So you can see that I've started to pull in the colors there and I've got uh, these sort of dangling down here that I will pull these uh, in the next time I, I pull this out and get that done. And I think I just need to strategically think about how I want to do it. I think that um, certainly once I get these pulled in, I'm going, this is another tree branch. I will work on the branch and I think I will get the branch completed and then do this in chunks. And that way, even if I'm off a little bit, I won't be off so much that it will be detrimental to sort of the placement of everything. So um, this is uh, one that I really enjoy working on. It was my whip go piece. I've got, and I was, my goal was to get a thousand stitches in it. And I got a little bit over a thousand, but not much. And again, it wasn't until the past week or so when I finally bit the bullet and said, okay, just work in those park threads and be done with it, um, that I finally am starting to enjoy it again. So I'm hoping that this will come out more frequently uh, now that I've made that decision. And then also for another one of the vowels, I pulled out um, Apple Sampler. Um, this is from an old issue of just a uh, cross stitch and country craft. This is what the patterns looked like. I, I pulled out these apples in the middle. I'm not doing those. Um, this was something I started last year for um, the magazine monthly cross stitch challenge. And uh, I've been enjoying it, but I'm kind of ready to, to get it done. Um, so here's where I am now. I have, I can't remember exactly where I was, but I've certainly did all the back stitching on this pink flower down here. I finished the apples and the leaves and stuff here and have done all the back stitching, pulled up the, the border and finished all of the, the letters. Um, so I am, I'm enjoying this, but I'm also sort of at that point where I sort of want it to be done. And I know I've said this before, but I feel like I'm getting close and yet it's not getting done. Um, so um, I also use this for Crystal Academy. One of the, the projects we had to work on was something that we had altered and because I had altered it by taking out that row, it um, I was able to uh, use that for that prompt. My next one that I'm very excited to show you, um, this I think, believe the next letter that we had was S. Um, and so I pulled out uh, this, uh, my Sense and Sensibility style. And I am very, uh, I worked on it this one and then a little bit later and I'm very happy to say I now have a finish. I'm so excited about this. This was actually the one freebie that we get in No New Starts. Um, and I started it um, in February when the, the mystery style started and I uh, finished it, I guess about a week ago. And so it's my first finish for 2021. So 
It's always nice to get a finish. Granted, this is a smaller one, and because it was a stitch along, I was motivated to keep working on it. But I think it's really pretty, and now I just have to decide if I have the courage with my limited sewing skills to try and finish it the way that Kristen um, suggested that we finish it, or if I want to do something a little bit different that might be a little bit easier for me. But I'm very excited about this. So this is the uh, Sense and Sensibility Stitch Along uh, for scent, um, from Kristen, Sapphire Mountain Houndcrafts, and the Stitching Book Club. So the next one that I worked on, I believe that we had the letter L. Um, either we had, I can't, I'm, and so I can't remember if it was, it was the letter L or it was um, consonants, which like the vowel we had to do, um, if it was the, if it was the consonants one, we had to do a hundred stitches on as many as many projects as possible that um, began with consonants. So but for many of us, we have a lot of those, so that was not particularly challenging. Um, but so this is little cake shop from Heaven and Earth Designs artwork by Amy Stewart. And so uh, this is this is the by far the uh, largest largest project I have over 350,000 stitches. So this one is going to take me a really long time. And this is uh, right now about 5,000 stitches. And so you can see I'm still mostly working on the wallpaper still. Um, don't know if this is a window or if it's like a poster, but that's sort of what this is going to be here. And then this is sort of the molding on the ceiling. Um, so basically when I get tired of working in pink, um, which I like stitching with pink, but every now and then I want something different. I'll start working on the molding up here um, Then I'll come back and do a little bit more of the pink um, But this is actually this is a 22 count hard anger and I'm doing this one over one um, But because I'm doing it with pattern keeper and this is the max color, but The wallpaper while there are quite a few different colors all together to make these these even these different pink stripes It's stripey and so it's not hard to do it. Um, there's not a lot of counting involved. And so I am, I, I do, I like, to, I've been working on this for the past few evenings and have been relatively sort of relaxing stitching. Um, I'm also using it this week for magical stitches. We have to put in a thousand stitches on something, some place that we would like to have a party. And I personally would love to have a party in a place where I have access to unlimited cake. Um, other people might want to have other things, but I love cake. Um, and so I'm very happy to work on this one. I also, um, I pull this one out almost every time. This is uh, Heaven and Earth's Cats in the Toy Box, um, uh, artwork by Leslie Ann Ivory. Um, this is my focus piece for, uh, focus piece for uh, 2021 with semi saying stitchers and full coverage fanatics. Um, so I try and get in um, at least two, 2,000, if not 3,000 stitches in this every month. Um, and so I, I think that I've used this for the consonants, but I used it for a lot of different things as well. I also pulled it out of the Q-snap. It was time to move it, so I've sort of kept it out. So here's where I, where I am. So that's where I started over there. A lot of, the first whole page was basically wallpaper, um, but then as you sort of come over, you can see, and I really can't see what you're seeing there. Um, so basically what I've worked on in the past uh, few weeks is I basically had finished the head of, excuse me while I figure this out, completed the head of the rag doll and her hat, and this is like the arm of the basket coming down, and there is, you can't really see it, but there is some little, I don't know, a little piglet or something, um, creature that sort of is here. Um, but what I also like to see is you can see, start to see the head of one of the cats. So this is the ear and the top of the head of the, the ginger cat. Um, so it's coming along um, nicely. Um, I think uh, I'm, once I sort of get done with this area here, the remainder of going across will not be, um, it goes back to being a lot more of the wallpaper. So I think I will get to um, the end uh, relatively quickly. I think I, this, this part in the middle took me quite a while um, because there was so much confetti in the rag doll's face. Um, so this month I put in about 3,000 stitches. I also um, 
worked on this, uh, it's called Bag Ladies, and you can see it's a bunch of cats hanging out in paper bags, and anyone who has cats know you can buy them the most expensive gift in the world, and they want the box of the bag more than they want the actual toy that's in the box. Um, I, this is the first time I worked on this this year. This was, um, I pulled it out for Magical Stitches because we had to stitch on something that had at least three cats, and I didn't want to use cats in the toy box because I do use that for um, cabin building in, in magical stitches and you're not allowed to double dip uh, across the weekly prompts and building cabins. Um, so, but being the crazy cat lady, having multiple, multiple whips with multiple cats is not a problem for me. Um, so this one I really haven't uh, done much on. Basically, I'm still just working on the bags themselves. So you really not much to write home about. Um, I basically just put a lot into this green bag. It does go relatively quickly because all of the bags are tent stitch. Um, I am really not a fan of tent stitch. Um, I have a, it's not, I, I always am miscounting um, in a way that I don't when I do full crosses. And I also, I don't, I'm not subject to vertigo or anything like that, but somehow just staring after at tent stitches for a long time makes me I sort of get a little bit dizzy um, and so it's just it's not my favorite stitch to do um, it's not that I'm having any huge problems but it's not it's my preferred way of working um, but uh, this is uh, this sunset I believe is uh, was is part of a dimensions kit and so um, they like to put that kind of texture in there I also when I started this I didn't realize that if you're doing 10 stitches and full crosses in a project your um, tent stitches should go in the same direction as the top leg of your X. I've only done 10 stitches so far. I haven't started working on any of the cats, but I didn't realize that. And so I have to decide if when I do the full crosses, am I going to do them different from how I usually do it so that everything matches or am I going to throw, you know, throw a cross into the wind and uh, just do what is more comfortable for me. I'm not there yet, um, but Nonetheless, this is a, a fairly easy stitch to do. And it's, it's um, on 16 count Ada that came with the kit. Um, although I don't, this actually I got from someone and so I don't, she used her own, her own floss, um, sorry, she used the kit floss but her own fabric and so I had to kit it up and I just went and found some conversion online and just kit it up with DMC. Um, so the next thing that I worked on, um, which I, there must have been an M somewhere in there, and I didn't feel like working on Mandala Giraffe anymore, so I picked up uh, Midnight Vigil from Heaven and Earth Design, artwork by Lisa Parker. This is the mini version. And so here's where I am now. Um, basically, I just con I'm just i continuing, these, this is the curtain on the side, I am continuing to work on this. Um, because this is a mini, even though I feel like I haven't done that much, this is over 2%, um, and so, uh, it goes relatively quickly and I'm sort of, you know, you can start to see, I mean, yes, this is just a curtain, but you can start to see the folds of the curtain um, already appearing. So this is a fairly easy stitch. I'm using 18 count, two over, two over one on the Ada. So it's a fairly quick stitch um, to work on and I'm enjoying it. I also have this on Pattern Keeper, so it's a good one for me to do in the evening um, because I don't have to, it's just my setup when I'm watching TV. This is the easy one to do. Okay. So then we have the letter T called. So I pulled out a uh, tug of war from Mystic Stitch. I'm doing this part here, so really not much to write home about right now. It's a lot of background. Um, however, this is my whip go piece uh, with, uh, for the, the boxes that were called. This is one of the projects I'm working on. Um, so I had to put in a thousand stitches, so hopefully I will get a little bit more, but as you can see, about, I don't know if that's a third or 25%, it's, you know, with the exception of the clothespin and the sparrow, it's 100%, um, you know, background. Um, so a lot of greens and black, and I think this time I did 939. So just a lot of dark colors. I'm fine with it. It's simple stitching. It just, because there's so much background, it's not something I pull out um, that frequently. Um, but when I do, I can do a lot of really quick stitching on it. So um, then we had the letter I that was called. 
So I pulled out, I'm sorry, let me show you the photo first. This is in the garden, so you can just basically see its flowers with some uh, birdhouses there. This is from an old uh, Just Cross Stitch and Country Crafts. Um, so here's where I am now. Um, this is the pole leading up to one of the birdhouses and another birdhouse here. So basically I just worked on this pole and then if I had colors left, I was putting it over here um, to fill in. Um, and so not a huge amount of progress on this because I picked it up for 200 stitches, but for the month of uh, May for the magazine monthly cross stitch challenge, I am uh, using this as well. So I started this in March because we needed to do something that had the color blue and this is a 28 count uh, linen, I think it's aqua mist from Lakeside Linen. And so it fit blue and I've pulled it out again because um, it's May flowers. And so uh, this is my focus piece. I will get a few, you know, get, I'm, I think I'm trying to get about 450 stitches in this in the month of May. So shouldn't really be a problem. Um, so I'm just excited to be uh, pulling this out. I love stitching on it. I love the way the colors are popping against this uh, blue fabric. Um, a lot of, and, and there's a lot of sort of quarter stitches and a lot of back stitching, so it just does take a little bit of time. I haven't done any of the back stitching yet, um, but I think, you know, so like this just looks like a purple blob, but once I get the back stitching in, I think the detail will be really great. Um, so I'm, I'll be working on this next month as well. And then the last project I have to show you uh, is Heaven, I'm sorry, Hands Across the Sea. Um, this is Jane Bannister, AKA the one with the giant cats because crazy cat lady needs more cats in her life. Um, so I'm still working on the border. It's quite a serious border and I haven't done very much. Again, this was something I started at the very end of 2020 to put 200 stitches in. Um, so I could say it was a start, um, but then this is the first time I picked it up this year. Um, and this, I am, this is another Lakeside Linen. Can't remember the name of it. Um, but fairly pale one um, and it's a 32 count. I am using the uh, uh, Swalage silks. Um, so even though it's 32 count, I am just doing one over two um, because the silk is a little bit thicker. Um, it's also very expensive and so I didn't want to have to double everything up. Um, but I think it, it's coming up nicely. I'm a little bit concerned because there is um, one p very quite pale, uh, it's not white, but it's sort of a cream color. That isn't showing up great on here, but when I sort of look at it, um, a lot of it is is surrounded by other colors, and so even though so the color will eventually um, come through, um, you know, it might be a little issue. I haven't looked very carefully when I do finally get down to the cats here, because like this kitty's head is poking up, um, and if that's the case, I can do a little back stitching just to give it a little bit more definition. I will also be using uh, Jane Bannister in May for uh, the letters of the month because uh, we're doing I, I'm doing I and J, and uh, so this Jane Bannister is the J. Um, so that leads me into some of my other plans. Um, so since we're speaking about letters of the month, I am going to uh, work on High Intensity by Artisy. I'll pull this out. And this is a picture of a jaguar. Um, so that's where it is, uh, and here's where I am. So haven't done. Yep. Uh, why do I feel like? Yes. Okay. There we go. I haven't done uh, very much. This is his tail, um, and this is the cropped version. So most of the pattern you're really focused on the jaguar himself and not on a lot of the background. Um, but this. Uh, um, I, so for letters of the month, I'm supposed to put um, 500 stitches into this. Um, so I uh, hopefully will make some good progress on this. Um, for some reason, I, I like working on this project. Um, it's just not one for whatever reason that I pull out that often. Maybe because I have so many other full coverage projects that I'm working on. Also in plans, I uh, for the so this uh, is. A Year Hawk Run Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. I think many of you are familiar with this um, pattern. I am going to, for, for no new starts, um, there's a non-counting challenge that if someone has a birthday month, they have a stitch along and 
the stitch along for the first two weeks in May, someone picked, uh, someone picked um, any of the Hawkwind Hollows. So I will work on this. Um, I'm right now in the April block. I've done the January. Um, but then also for the Magazine Monthly Challenge, um, I, I really wanted to push myself. And so I said my challenge, because we have an acrostic with the word Daisy, and since this is year at Hawkwind Hollow, my challenge is to finish this block. Um, and I don't have a huge amount left. Obviously, I have to finish building the house. I have all the stuff along the bottom here, um, which is mostly grass, but then there's some animals in here, and then a couple umbrellas, and then obviously finishing. Um, so it's one of those I feel like I don't have that much left, and yet there probably is a lot. But I really do want to push myself and finish this. And knowing a lot of the challenges, um, inevitably there will be some magical stitches or something that I can find something that fits a year at Hawthorne Hollow. Um, so I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not too worried about trying to push myself on this because I'm not, I can always double dip it with something else. Um, also this weekend, um, Brenda and the serial starter, Laura, um, have declared it the first weekend in May to be, uh, to be um, a black, um, Blackboard Designs stitch along. So anything that you have for Blackboard Design. So I have uh, Oh Joyous Day. And so I will be working on that. So just to remind you where I am, this is where I am now. So obviously I haven't gotten very far, but this weekend I will have a chance to pull this out and work on it quite a bit. Um, so that should be fun. So that's all my stitching. I did quite a bit, touched a lot of things. Maybe didn't make a huge amount of progress on many of them, but still got to, to touch many of them and um, have a chance to have an excuse to show it to all of you. I have a teeny bit of haul. Um, so I have from uh, the from Fortnite Fabrics. This is um, in the Gray Club, as I mentioned. So this is a fabric called Sovain. Um, so it's coming out a little bit bluer, I think, than it actually is. Um, it's more gray than blue, um, but it's got some nice modeling in there. So I'm excited about that one. Also, um, uh, Michelle from Bendy Stitchy, um, Bendy Stitches. Um, was ha is, is she many weekends does a live sale D stash and so I got um, uh, I belong to the Cross Stitch Nation from um, Heartstring Samplery so I I'm excited that I have this in my collection. I also sort of won two uh, giveaways. Um, so the first one was from No New Starts um, for the riff off. Um, there were a couple bonus items and some of them were quite hard. Um, so there were, uh, you know, like if you had something that had a syringe or a hamburger or I can't remember every cell phone and that's just, I don't, don't have a lot of things with that. But one of them was to stitch on an item with, um, someone in a green dress, which I had portrait of Veronica and I made sure that I got that in there. And then I also had, um, uh, I can't remember which one, but apparently I stitched on something that had someone in a uniform and that was one of the things as well. And I didn't really... I think it was someone in a space suit or something and it was called a uniform. I don't know. Um, but I'll take the credit. But anyhow, everyone who stitched on those bonus things were put into a drawing and uh, they had um, prizes. And so uh, prize I got, this is a, a chart. It's a little, it's a, little, it's a really small one called uh, Singing to the Choir by Myrtle Grace, Grace Motifs. Cute little birds. Um, so that's, it should be a, a quick stitch when I get to it. Um, and then from Carla at Cobweb Corner, I want to give away for, uh, this is a kit, um, it's a full coverage kit, a Bucilla kit called Afternoon Nap. Um, so that's really cute and it comes with everything in there. Um, so I'll be excited to work on this next year as well. Um, so that is my plans, my haul, everything I've worked on for the past three weeks. Um, just a little bit about what I've been reading. Um, so I read The House in the Cerulean Sea. I am going to get the names wrong. T.J. Clune, I think, is his name, um, and I, you know, I had heard really, really great things about it, um, and was really nervous to read it because of it living. You know, when you hear such great reviews, is it going to live up to hype? I greatly enjoyed the book. Um, you know, it's it's basically a world where there are magical beings, and there's a, and they don't want the magical beings to get out of control. So that this is basically there are departments that regulate their behavior. And so there's one guy who's a caseworker at the department in charge of magical youth. 
and there are orphanages or children's homes and he's a caseworker to go to see that make sure the children are being taken care of and he's sent to one very unique home um, with lots of very um, different children um, including one that they can't even identify um, what exactly he is um, but you know but they're children and it's just sort of a really sweet story about accepting people for who they are even if they look different or they have parents who are uh, notorious or whatever but it's except about a book about accepting people for who they are and very well written um, I greatly enjoyed it um, and so and but it's not just about accepting the kids for who they are but it's also about like the lead character accepting who he is um, and standing up for himself um, and following what his heart is telling him um, and so a really really sweet book um, and then the other book I read was um, actually well one another one I read was um, The Fall of the Dodo and I believe the author is Neil Stevenson basically a book about um, a secret Department of Defense entity and Dodo stands for the Department of Diachronic Operations and so it's a world in which uh, apparently magic had existed and then with uh, basically with the invention of photography magic it gets snuffed out in the 19th century and there's a device that allows um, people who are witches to use their mag magic in this device and so it's a basically um, so you know you sort of I guess magical realism if that's one way to look at it um, but tied in quite a bit with uh, um, quantum physics as well and so basically they um, you know this they recruit people and then they, they're sending people back in time to try you know it's Department of Defense so they're trying to make small alterations so that they don't totally change the course of history but that they make alterations so that things are a little bit better for the United States um, and, um, but I will say that I did um, there are parts of it I greatly enjoyed and there are parts of it that just went on and on and on I, I listened to it as an audiobook um, but when I saw it, it was about 850 pages and in the middle I was getting really really bored with it um, maybe the last 25% it started really picking up and I was like okay now the story I'm really getting into it and then such a cop-out ending um, maybe they wrote this book with a plan for there to be a part a, a, a second book um, but you know there was no it was sort of well here's our plan how we're gonna wrap everything up and make everything better and they don't tell you what that is it's just like here's the plan and I just I so Maybe there's a book two coming, I don't, and, and if, if that's the case, then okay, the book ended fine, but I was really disappointed um, with how it ended. Um, so I was, you know, skeptical at the beginning because I'm not a, you know, I'm, I'm not necessarily, uh, I probably have an easier time believing in magic than I do believe in time travel, um, but then, uh, you know, in the middle, it just got very tedious, but then when it started to pick up, I'm like, okay, this is great, and then just to have that let down at the end was sort of disappointing. Um, and then the other book that I finished was uh, Small Great Things by Jodi Picoult and uh, she is one of my favorite writers um, for those of you who are not familiar with her she likes to take very controversial subjects and uh, write books about them um, and this one was no exception and, and so this one was uh, focused very squarely on, on race um, issues in the United States um, she is a white author and uh, at least the version that I read at, um, in the epilogue where she's talking about her experience of writing it, she said, you know, how can she as a white woman try to write the story of it, um, what uh, black Americans are going through and dealing with race issues every day. She knows that she is someone who has um, had a lot of privileges because of her skin color. and. And so, but she acknowledges that. Um, but if you know anything about Jodi Picoult, she researches her topics extensively. This isn't just talking to one person, but she has, she will have talked to many, many people and gotten many different perspectives. Um, and she also, in this book, um, sort of runs the, the gambit of racism. So um, from the white nationalist 
whichever one you know will point to and say he is racist you know to the liberal do-gooders who say i don't see color and yet they perpetuate many of the stereotypes um you know they have benefited from a system of alleged equality when they really need to have equity so very very good book i encourage you um to read it and it was inspired it was you know the book is not a true story um, but it was in, uh, basically inspired um, because there was a, uh, a case somewhere in the United States where there was I believe it was a black nurse um, who had um, was uh, attending the birth of a uh, child of a white supremacist and that they told the hospital staff that they did not want any black staff touching their child or t providing any care to their child and they made a note in uh, the hospital made a note in the file and uh, the black staff who were affected by this sued and won a, a discrimination case against the hospital because while people have can say I don't like this doctor or don't like that nurse um, you do have a right to, to who is providing you medical care you can't the, the, as an employer the hospital cannot um, uh, the hospital cannot just deny everyone the chance uh, to work on certain cases, the way that Jody Picoult explains it in the book. Um, but it's basically that sort of the basis is that there's a black nurse who attends the birth of a, um, a child of a white supremacist um, and then the baby dies. So she's told you can't take care of the child. She ends up in a situation where she's left in the room with the child and it goes into uh, as a um, medical emergency and yet she's told she's not allowed to, to touch or treat the child. And so then she actually uh, gets arrested for, um, for I think it's, I can't remember if it's manslaughter or murder, but she's arrested for that because um, the, the assumption is that she did something that uh, caused the child to have a, a medical event and die. Um, but very well written. Um, I think it came out in 2016. Um, so it is about five years old, but uh, I think it's, even more relevant today than when it came out. Um, so what am I watching? I am watching um, a couple of shows, but the one I'll talk about is, uh, I think it's Mayor of Easttown. Um, it's an HBO show with Kate Winslet. Um, but so far, I think two um, episodes have come out on HBO. Uh, it's incredibly powerful. Kate Winslet is a brilliant actress, and so she does a great job in this, but it's she lives in a small town. And the first episode, there is a you know, she's a police detective and she, you know, but it's a small town, so she's investigating all sorts of crimes. But the one that really is sticking to her is one of her high school friends, and they're all now like in their 40s or 50s. One of her high school friends has um, has had a child who's been missing for over a year and a teenage child, and no one knows what happened. No one knows what happened to that child. And so it's um, just a very... Um, uh, very compelling story um, and so and Kate Winslet is brilliant so um, and then the, the first episode ends with a, another another teenage girl um, getting killed and so it's your typical police drama in terms of you want to figure out who killed the girl um, but at the same time um, just the writing is very good lots of layers um, Kate Winslet is brilliant but the rest of the cast is very good as well so if you're looking for something to watch and you don't mind sort of a, a gritty crime drama this is a good one for you. Well, I've talked my head off for quite a while, so I think uh, that will be it. Thank you for watching, and I hope to come back in a couple of weeks. Happy stitching, everyone.